saints, peace, love, grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Today, we, be, we begin our study on the book of Acts. Now, in keeping with Paul's commandment for us to rightly divide, we need to ask ourselves three questions. Three questions whenever we study God's truth. First, we ask, who's speaking? Second, who's being spoken to? And third, when's it taking place? Is it in the time past? Is it in but now? Or is it in ages to come? Or, you know, past, present, or future? Dispensation of law versus grace versus kingdom. So the book of Acts was written by the Holy Spirit through Luke, approximately 63 to 64 AD. Now, chapter 1 all the way through chapter 28 records the history between 30 AD to 63, 64 AD, so a period of about 33 to 34 years, starting at the ascension of Jesus and ending with Paul living in Rome where he writes the four prison epistles and also he writes to Timothy and Titus. Now in Acts 1, as we begin, it reads, The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Now, not much is known about Theophilus other than he's most likely a person of reverence, someone who uh, maybe holds a, a valued position within either you know the religious community or maybe the government system. In the book of Luke, Luke addresses this same person, Theophilus, as most excellent Theophilus. A, a, a title usually assigned to people of power or perhaps people who are considered the elite, if you will. So let's look at that real quick. In the book of Luke, verses, verse 3 and 4, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. So we know who's speaking, who's being spoken to. Next is what dispensation is this taking place in? The book of Acts starts out focusing on the sheep of the house of Israel, the same people Jesus came for to begin with, the seed of Jacob, the 12 tribes, the Jews. Then, because of the house of Israel, because they reject Jesus as their Messiah, we see the house of Israel fall, and a new plan is unveiled. This new plan was kept secret in God since before the foundation of the world and is now revealed by Jesus to a Jewish man named Saul. His Jewish name is Saul, and Paul is his Roman Gentile name. Now, the book of Acts is all about the transition starting with Peter and the apostles in the kingdom program. Okay, the coming kingdom program. They were still in the dispensation of law because they were still worshiping at the temple, which included the Mosaic laws. They were very law-minded, if you will, but they were in a, a situation of time, an administration, a dispensation that was waiting for the earthly kingdom or the kingdom of heaven to be ushered in by Jesus Christ. And it ends in the complete transfer of dispensations from kingdom or law to the dispensation of grace from Peter to Paul. Now also, it's important to note here that from Acts chapter 1 to the stoning of Stephen in Acts chapter 7 is just a one year period. Acts 1 to Acts 7 is just one year. God grants the nation of Israel an extension of one year to repent. And we're going to see more about this in the future studies. Now, in Acts 1, verse 2, we continue on until the day in which he was taken up. Now, this is speaking about Jesus ascending to heaven. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles 
whom he had chosen. So first we see Jesus speaking to the apostles on earth when he was here. He gets crucified and then he presents himself in the glorified body for a period of 40 days. And during that time, he speaks to the apostles, speaks to Peter. Over 500 brethren saw Jesus in his glorified state after the resurrection. But once he ascended from this glorified state back into heaven, he chose to communicate to the apostles and Peter through the Holy Ghost, okay, which gave them commandments to follow, directions. And notice here that Jesus chose these apostles. Okay, they weren't anything special. They weren't anyone special. These are not uh, special people. They're not high in high positions of government or the priesthood. These were everyday, average people. Nothing special about them. Uh, they weren't the top of the priesthood. Jesus picked these 12 men by election. Okay, the word election is very important. Now, if you recall, there's another election of, of a group of people during Daniel's 70th week as well. So in verse 3, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. Now pay attention to this next verse. For John truly baptized with water. But ye, whenever you see the word but, it, it negates the prior sentence or the prior thought. Okay? It's a complete change of thought. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. There's a transfer here of one method of baptism with water. John baptized with water as a uh, rehearsal, if you will, of a future event when they would all be baptized by the Holy Ghost. Okay, baptizing with water is, a, is almost like a, you can consider it like a rehearsal, a, a feast. Of something that represents something coming in the future all right so but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence Jesus tells them something new here he tells the Apostles that from now on they would no longer be baptized the same way John baptized but now they would be baptized a different way a new way Jesus says but ye ye will be baptized by by the Holy Ghost and he's speaking to who the apostles he's speaking to Peter and the rest okay in verse 6 when they therefore were come together they asked of him saying Lord wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel what do they mean by restore the kingdom remember we're in the dispensation of the coming kingdom here okay they're still expecting the the coming the kingdom of heaven to be ushered in by their Messiah Jesus they're asking Jesus if he was about to usher in the promised earthly kingdom the kingdom of heaven on earth the promises that they were given by the prophets in Scripture that one day the 12 this the 12 tribes would rule over the earth for a thousand years with their Messiah and the rest of the Old Testament saints, which are resurrected at the end of Daniel's 70th week at the second coming. In verse 7, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons, which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye, okay, ye, the apostles, shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Now, these two men here, 
These are two angels dressed in white. They're revealing how Jesus is going to return at the second coming at some time in the future. Verse 11, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The angels are asking them, why are you guys looking up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Then return they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. Now, a Sabbath day's journey is about 1.5 miles. It's a mile and a half. And this was the law back then, okay? You were only allowed to travel a mile and a half on the Sabbath, all right? Before it was considered work. They weren't allowed to work on the Sabbath. This is part of the Mosaic laws that the Jews followed, the dispensation of law slash kingdom that we're talking about here. This is the period of time that we're dealing with. Verse 13, and when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelotes and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about 120. There were 120 people there, believers, men and brethren. This scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Now, anytime you read something about prior scripture, it's important you pay attention and you go back and look at the scripture that we're dealing with. Sometimes there's important clues, okay? There's nuggets of information there that is very important you go back and read it. Peter here is recalling scripture written in the book of Psalm, Psalm 41. So let's look at that real quick. Psalm 41 verse 9, Yea, mine own familiar friend, He's talking about Judas here, in whom I trusted which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. Recall that Jesus dipped the bread and gave it to Judas, a sign of which person would turn him in to the authorities. So Peter is reminding them here of something written in the book of Psalm that Judas was written about long before the event actually took place. That prophecy had been fulfilled to a T, right? In Acts 1, verse 17, continuing on, For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Speaking of Judas. Now, this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. Remember, Judas was paid a, a certain amount of money to uh, turn Jesus in. Well, he took that money and he bought a piece of property in the field and falling headlong he burst asunder in the midst and all his bowels gushed out and it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem insomuch as the field is called in their proper tongue as seldoma that is to say the field of blood for it is written in the book of Psalm let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein and his bishopric let another take Wherefore of these men which have companied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. Okay, so there's the qualifiers to be an apostle. You had to be chosen by Jesus, elected. You had to be with him during his earthly ministry, and you had to be a witness of his resurrection, seeing his glorified body. So I ask you a question. Can there be apostles in the world today? Well, not according to the King James Version Bible. So how did they replace Judas Iscariot? Next verse, verse 23. And they appointed two, 
Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen. Again, we see here that Jesus had to choose each person. Jesus chose them. He elected these people. And we're going to see him do the same exact thing here in verse 25, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias. And he was numbered with the eleven apostles. So they cast lots. Casting lots was simply putting stones in a jar, shaking the jar, and casting the stones out. Much like we use uh, dice today, right? When you play Monopoly, you put the dice in a little cup, you shake the cup, and you throw the dice out. Okay, this is the same thing as casting lots, except they use a jar, stones, pieces of wood, and so on. And so whichever name came up, now remember, there's only two stones in this jar. So they shake it. The Lord chooses which one is going to be considered one of the other apostles, and Matthias is chosen. Now, the important thing to keep in mind here is that they asked Jesus to pick one. He's the one that chose that apostle. Okay, those apostles didn't choose him Jesus did Jesus chose Matthias to be the 12th Apostle and then in the future Jesus picks Paul to be the first person in the body of Christ now in closing a quick review Luke writes a letter to Theophilus we know who wrote it who is he speaking to explaining everything that happened following Jesus's crucifixion and how he was seen in his glorified state the need to replace Judas Iscariot with Matthias and what it takes to qualify to be an apostle and so Christ Jesus promises to send them the comforter the Holy Spirit and tells the apostles to stay in Jerusalem until they receive this power from on high Luke is speaking inside of the dispensation of law still waiting for the dispensation of the kingdom opening up the scene for us concerning the ushering in of the earthly kingdom promised to the 12 tribes and paul hasn't been converted yet at this point we're still very early on in history we're at the beginning of acts within the first year so he hasn't been chosen yet the body of christ hasn't been created yet at this point it's still future and we're well within the first year leading up to the stoning of stephen so that's it for this study. Again, I want to keep it short. Thanks for studying with me, saints. Lord willing, we're going to move into Acts chapter 2 on the next video, and we're going to continue on with our study of the transition from Israel to the body of Christ. Till next time, peace, grace, love of Christ Jesus be with all of you, and I'll see you on the next video.